Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net. Also author of books like the Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, and Alton's Pandemic Preparedness Guide. There's more than one way to stitch a cat, if not skin one, and surgical staples is one of them. A while ago, I talked about a Hungarian physician named Ignat Simmelweis, an early proponent of hand washing for medical personnel. Surgical staples were invented by another Hungarian physician named Homer Hültel. Now, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. He invented the first surgical stapling device in 1908 with the instrument weighing in at 8 pounds and requiring a couple of hours to assemble and load for intestinal surgery, a purpose for which they're still used today. Today, the typical stapler weighs just a few ounces, and you, Survival Medic, will be using them for skin. Staples look and act much like, well, office staples. They work by pinching the skin edges of a laceration together. They may be used on the skin of the abdomen, extremities, scalp, back, lots of different places, but are less appropriate for use in certain areas like the neck and face, and maybe some areas of the feet and hands. Stapling is pretty much the preferred method of closure for trauma care these days, especially if mass casualties are involved in everything from natural disasters to car crashes, and this is partly because they can be placed so rapidly. However, unlike surgical procedures, which need only one medic, the best staple results occur when two people are involved, an assistant to align the skin with the forceps and another to apply the actual staples. In fact, in a staple procedure, the assistant is the skilled labor. I'm not saying it can't be done by one person, but it looks better in the end if you have two. Here you see that we're using my 95-year-old grandma again for our demonstration. Again, just kidding. It's a pig's foot, a great template to practice on. The assistant is going to use Adson's forceps, the same instrument I showed you to help with suture procedures, but this time they're using two. You'll hold one in each hand, if you're the assistant, like you would a pen. Your partner, we'll call him or her the surgeon, will hold the stapler gun in their hand like you might hold a garden hose nozzle. They'll stand in a position so that there's an overhead view of the laceration to be closed. The assistant then grabs the edges of the skin closest to you with the two forceps. Then, he or she will avert the edges, that is, turn them inside out slightly and hold them together. So you're averting the skin a little bit. Hold your stapler at a 60 degree angle or so to the approximated skin edges and press firmly downward right in back of the ads and forceps. Note the line of the laceration should be right in the middle of the line of the stapler. Press the trigger of your stapler to embed the staple and then release completely and retract. Check the staple placement and remove any that are not appropriately executed. The skin should appear slightly tented up if the staple was placed correctly. Place subsequent staples one half inch apart, especially in areas over a joint. If not over a joint, they can be spaced more widely apart with stereostrips placed in between for additional support. Like most skin sutures, staples require a removal procedure. For sutures, you only need a small scissors, while a special instrument is needed to remove staples. This particular remover has two prongs on the bottom and one on top. Place the two prongs under the staple to be removed, clamp, and you'll see the staple begin to rise. After clamping, pull straight up and the patient will barely know you did it. Wound infection is one common complication of wound closure, and the risk with staples was found to be more than sutures when both methods were compared in one review of almost 700 orthopedic cases. This could relate to how quickly and easily staple closure is to perform. So easy, in fact, that you may be tempted to always use staples. If you're not careful to clean the wound and eliminate dead space, however, you might possibly lock in bacteria that could cause real trouble. It's always important to consider the factors originally causing the injury that may lead to infection. Just as with sutures, staples can cause scarring. Healthcare professionals should not use staples on the face or neck, and discomfort may make them a less popular choice for the hands or feet. In patients who easily scar, staples could become embedded, difficult to remove, and scars more pronounced, especially if the staples are left in for too long. That depends a lot on the location. More than 5 days on the scalp to more than 15 to 20 days over joint, that's too much. 
In survival scenarios, the medic should know how to close a wound with staples, sutures, and other methods, but more importantly, develop the judgment as to when to close a wound and when not to. Things that we've talked about and written about for many years. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, I know you don't have all the medical supplies and personal protection items you'll need in times of trouble, so why not check out our entire line of kits, supplies, and more at store.doomandbloom.net.